Hello and welcome to Corridors of Power. I'm Sanjay Pinto. This is your show, your very own version in Chennai of Hard Talk with politicians and officials in the hot seat. And our guest today is none other than Chennai's Police Commissioner, Mr. T. Rajendran. So thank you very much for joining us, sir. Pleasure. You're known as uh, a People's Commissioner because I think you're the first commissioner to have actually reached out, sir, to every section of society from hotel owners to gym owners, uh, schools, banks. Yeah. Uh, does this have to do with your... Uh, Intelligence background, sir, that you were in special branch, uh, IG, DIG intelligence, IG intelligence, uh, also heading uh, Narcotics Control Bureau. Well, that is just uh, one side of it. Uh, but uh, this reaching out to the people essentially started in, uh, when I was IG training. In fact, there, uh, we held an experiment between uh, the public and uh, some inspectors. And we found there was a mismatch in the sense that the public did not know what we were doing. And we did not know what the public wanted, actually. Mm. And at the end of the interaction, in fact, we came up very well. In fact, in fact I, I was a little apprehensive that we may not have a good image among the public. Mm. But we did, out of the 10-point scale, I could say we had about five. Mm. So once I took over as commissioner, I thought this is a good opportunity to put this experiment into effect and see how it works. And I think it has worked tremendously well. Mm -hmm. Especially with school principals and all that, especially Not in the wake school of the principals, kidnapping cases. Yeah, there were residential welfare associations, we have made it mandatory now. Mm. So that is, uh, what to say, giving us a lot of inputs. Mm. And like areas, the SMS, uh, they send us text saying that we have... You used to get a lot of uh, uh, text messages and calls yeah. on your mobile number, yeah, you had to yeah, change yeah, it also. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And we keep getting this and this SMS service is still very vibrant. I we see. keep getting at least 50 messages a day. And all acted on, sir? Yeah, all acted on. So what are some of these SMS, the bulk of the SMS complaints we get? See, most of them relate to some kind of drunken misbehavior or uh, some kind of uh, noise menace. Other civic problems also brought to our notice. And uh, since uh, the SMS service is under my direct uh, supervision, we attended, attend to it in a very personal manner. Mm. Talking of drunken behavior, I mean, we are, you're known to be, I mean, from Loyola College and all that, where you studied, to be a very progressive officer. Um, but again, a lot of people say that the Chennai police is actually plays spoil sport, especially with New Year, uh, in terms of the discotheques, the Cinderella hour. Uh, they say that the five-star pubs have to shut down. The last song should be played at 10.55, but a Tasmac shop will be open till 3 in the morning. No, I don't think it's true. See, generally, the bars and the five-star hotels are open till 11 on normal days. And if it's the New Year, uh, we allow celebrations till about 1.30, uh, and bars still have to stop by... Uh, 11 o'clock. Tasmac shops are closed down by 10, mostly. So but I don't not think really, sir. So if you look around, uh, your officers also on Nitrons will tell you that many cases they're open with half shutter till about sometimes 1, no, 1.30. If there's anything like that, it can be brought to my notice. Definitely will shut it down. The okay. timing is only 10 o'clock. A lot of people also feel that, uh, you know, the, the, the patrolling perhaps around the Tasmac shops can be actually strengthened because a lot of nuisance... We do it. See, we uh, have about 80 to 90 vehicles on a uh, daily basis. But we have more number of Tasmac shops. That is mm. one thing. So, and we petrol is there a headache, sir? Is a Tasmac shop a headache for you? No, we g keep getting complaints. Mm. People ring us up and t tell us like uh, there's some kind of you know, drunken uh, misbehavior and things like that. But now we've started patrolling schools also. So, mm. the, we have an area which we have to patrol necessarily mm. in a particular police station limit. So, we have to sort of go through all those areas. Mm -hmm. So, we can't keep concentrating on the Tasmac shops all the while. That is the issue. And now we don't pay, uh, play a spoiled sport, uh, uh, spoiled sport or anything like that. We don't mind people drinking in hotels or restaurants or whatever it is. What we don't want is drunken misbehavior. Mm. That is all. I remember that uh, as a little boy, you were fond of kite flying. Yes. <laughs> and you've flown many kites. I think once yes. you had a fall also, sir. Yes, uh, yes, yes, yes. But now, yeah, unfortunately, uh, we have not banned kite flying, but we are trying to regulate it, saying that they should not use manja. You used to use manja as a little boy, Yes, sir? yes. You used, used to, to use it, yeah. <laughs> but you now, unfortunately, I have to ban it. So we banned uh, manja threads from being used. Mm. And since it is becoming a little dangerous, people flying it in very crowded areas, it can uh, prove fatal. Mm. Somebody is traveling on a two-wheeler and is caught in the thread. So what you're saying is kite flying per se is not banned, it's only kite flying with manja? Manja, yeah. Okay. Right. What about playing on the playing cricket on the beach, sir? Gully cricket? Uh... Yeah, beach, it was a very uh, painful decision for us to take because what happened was, uh, see, beach is a middle-class re recreation. And you find people uh, thronging the beach in large numbers in the evenings, afternoons and holidays and uh, with so many people playing on the beach, mm -hmm. uh, somebody as young as 10 years old and to somebody 50 years old they are playing on the beach and so many teams, mm -hmm. hundreds of teams, people coming from far off places, they are coming and playing 
there was no peace for the beach goers. In mm. fact, they were being hit and the vehicles were being hit and things like that. And lots of lots of complaints. Talking so, of peace on the of peace for the beach goers, a lot of couples, sometimes even married couples, sit there and the charge is that the policemen harass them because uh, I have myself seen cases where uh, a young couple would be found at the beach and the policeman coming and telling them, asking them why they are sitting there, and they say it's my birthday, so I've come. Birthday, you should go to the church or the temple. They say that is a mindset, at least among. Uh, See, this is uh, what they call moral policing. Moral policing. In fact, people have uh, asked me quite a few times before about this. See, we are very clear about moral policing. We are not here to do any kind of moral policing. What I've instructed my police officers and men to do is, if they find any couple crossing a limit, now that is very subjective. How would the yeah. what would broad what would the limit broadly? Let's how say they're fondling each other or something like that, okay. which, which which is uh, kind of uh, what to say embarrassment to the other. Actually, the 292 the IPC, the yeah. thing of obscenity is actually a fluid term. It's yeah, not yeah. really defined so, in IPC. What we have said is you can uh, just approach them and ask them to leave the place. That is all. You don't have to be harsh. You don't have to use harsh words. You don't have to be moralistic about it. Mm. Or you don't have to be parental about it. Okay. You just approach them and ask them to leave the place. So if and they also if caution them, don't go to other places which are remote on the beach because they could be exploited by antisocial elements. So if, if there are officers who, who speak rudely or who pass unnecessary remarks, like I think a PhD scholar recently brought that to your notice, yeah. then that's something you're willing to look into if they will Yeah, definitely, you. yeah. See, any kind of misdemeanor or misbehavior on the part of the police, you're willing to take action, very strong action. So again, uh, critics would say that people urinate in public places. Yeah. They... Uh, uh, in fact, smoke in public places, yeah. which is banned. But if they hold hands in public places, they are found fault with. Holding hands, I don't think anybody is bothered. I don't think police goes after them or anything like that. Beaches, yes. I've also received some complaints. And this is what we have told them very clearly. So you must understand, most of my men also come from rural areas. Mm. People have different backgrounds and different mindsets. And so we are trying to give them a homogeneous mindset, saying like, this is not a problem at all. Mm. Unless it is somebody complains to you about it or something else. even then mm. you be kind to them and ask them to leave the place mm. that, that should be the solution to it nothing more okay. there's no need to bring them through to the station summon the parents tell them your girl is doing this all these things are not needed they've done but, that yeah, in the yeah, past yeah, and yeah, many years ago it, yeah they've done it see they take on a parental role sometimes they take on a very moralistic role sometimes we said you don't have to do that okay yeah so you've reached out as i said uh, to all sections what about uh, the one that matters most uh, lawyers with whom there's always been this confrontation? So I wouldn't say confrontation. In fact, I m keep meeting lawyers uh, day in and day out. Mm. I don't have to meet them separately. No, they are fact, still very hurt about what happened yeah, yeah. on the High Court. Uh... See, that was one incident I think we should put it behind us and uh, think ahead and uh, look forward. And uh, in fact, I have many lawyer friends who are very close friends and they keep, uh, keep meeting me often and things like that. And on a daily basis also, lawyers bring me representations. I entertain them. We have a very good professional relationship. And that is what counts. So again, another problem that we f that we find is that when uh, an average citizen goes to a police station to file that FIR, despite uh, several directives from uh, the police commissioners in the past as well, that even if it's not your jurisdiction registered, do not turn a complainant away. That doesn't really happen as a result of which many have to go to the High Court to get a directive to file that FIR. Why is filing an FIR still such a problem? Not just here, across the country. See, in fact, there are two, three issues here. One is uh, filing an FIR itself in a station. That is the jurisdiction station. That, I think, has been fairly sorted out because we are holding meetings with the residential welfare associations and that is why I want people to reach out, uh, the police to reach out to the public so mm. that they have this comfort level when they walk into a station, one. But there is a problem when sometimes uh, a person goes to a station, which is not the jurisdiction station, mm. and tries to file a complaint. Mm. Now, that is also being sorted out and in one instance, I suspended six police people, mm. police personnel, because uh, the petitioner was tossed from station to station. Mm. So that also has been sorted out. There are many cases which could be civil in nature, which mm. police would have refused permission. Mm. So those cases, I think people approach the court, they get a direction. So we register an FIR and carry on with the investigation. Mm -hmm. So you're clearly saying that even if it's not the jurisdiction police station, they, are, they, they, they must are, register they the case happen. and transfer the case to the jurisdiction police station. Okay. Yeah. So what about the Mamul culture in, in the Chennai police? Uh, there was a time when they say you had to pay through your nose to get a posting of Inspector Flower Bazaar, for instance. Uh, the Mamul collection, which is why they say hawkers exist because of uh, corruption in the police, especially the lower levels. Uh, what, what, what is the, uh, you know, the, the commissionerate doing about this? See, as far as postings are concerned, there's absolutely uh, no question of anybody paying anybody. Because when I took over as commissioner, in fact, I sent out 18 people outside the mm. city 
and there was no abs absolutely no interference at all because they came to adverse notice yeah they came to adverse notice so that that system is being follow, followed even now you mentioned flowers of police station in fact or, or let's say pondi bazaar also. yeah yeah when uh, flowers of police station fell vacant that post fell vacant i selected the one of the most honest inspectors and posted him there there is absolutely no interference is honest inspector today an oxymoron sir i wouldn't say that there are honest people still mm -hmm. like uh, i think like any other department police also has it uh, but then see it's such a tough life for a cop who works for 12 hours a day 14 hours a day sometimes even 16 hours a day in mm -hmm. fact i myself work for about 12 hours a day mm -hmm. so corruption is there everywhere mm -hmm. why only the police mm -hmm. so also uh, when you say interference Uh, is that's clearly not a myth that political interference is there there's been absolutely no political interference till now you know no the one or two occasions when Are you being politically correct sir no 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 one or two occasions see politicians always ring me up for mm. various things why only politicians mm. friends ring me up other people ring me up journalists also ring yeah, me yeah everybody r r r rings me up as far as the uh, representation is legal and you can do something about it you do it otherwise you don't do to it let off, that is all yeah. to let off criminals sir No, I don't think anybody has done it. The common man would find that difficult to believe. Why is it so? See, the the, the tr trouble is uh, there is something known as police image, and then a perceived image of the police. The mm. perceived image of the police, which is what to say, what is uh, it, which is uh, amplified through the media, the gossip and what not and all. Mm. I think that sort of stays more in the minds of the people. And a person who has a good experience with the police doesn't go out and tell the people. Whereas a person who has a bad mm. experience with the police, he goes out goes out and tells a hundred people, look, this is what I had. The same was good for the police also one would say because uh, when a crime is committed then you don't hear from the from the cops but when there's a display and then the and <laughs> like for instance even yeah. think you recovered yeah, one crore yeah, worth yeah, uh, jewelry yeah, 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 yeah. then they go to town they will make five calls and those faxes will come so it, it cuts both ways uh. cuts both ways again when a crime is committed that is news when mm. it's detected it's never news individually mm. so yes. that is why we try to hold this press interviews but you're saying is that zilch political interference not once no, have you got no, a call no. so many people ring me up mm. even journalists ring me up Uh, my friends ring ring us up people from various other departments ring up for favors hmm. so many kinds of favors i see certain kind of kinds of favors you can readily do it these so are legit legitimate uh, things favors like okay. a passport verification or kind okay. of some police verification or something else uh, not to close a case no no, 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 no nobody has i can tell you with uh, what to say a certainty hmm. that nobody has ever spoken to me regarding any investigation so far hmm. To so release somebody or to close a case or go south pedal on a case no so what you're saying your hands have never yeah, been tied no no, no. never been tied never been tied so if there is a failure yeah. of law and order it, you take entire yeah, responsibility yeah i take entire no. responsibility yes all right we'll slide into a short break on corridors of power and we come back we'll talk to the police commissioner also about kidnapping cases one of which was detected uh, recently in chennai stay tuned mm -hmm.